Ladies and gentlemen and children from around the world, welcome to The Kaggle Show. My name is Don Agent, and I'll be your host this week. And back with us again is my dear friend Dennis Shears, our Executive Vice President of KBT. Glad to have you back, Dennis. Glad to be here, Don. You, uh, I don't get to see as much that often. We talked about this in the past because you obviously and your family reside out in Las Vegas area That's great. currently. But uh, I'm glad to hear that you're uh, all going to be kind of coming back here soon and glad to have you down for the week. So thanks for coming out, bud. Thanks for having me. You know, we get a lot of questions, uh, a lot of them from the tours that, that we do here when we have uh, people come in and, and we show, you know, all the different levels of manufacturing. But one of the huge things that stands out is the chemical manufacturing or KBT, which essentially um, you created with John Davis in the beginning. You've got an unbelievable team right now. And, and what I wanted to kind of give the audience was a little bit of the history of, you know, like, how did you meet John, and what brought you to Kaggle? Funny story, actually, how I met John. I, I actually went to college with his son, and uh, it was, the year was 1996, the Intercollegiate Bowling Championships, Kansas City. Uh, got it on an elevator, and uh, John was on the elevator, was introduced to him, and by the time we got down to the bottom of the elevator, John said, let me get this straight. You're a bowler, you did lanes, you worked in the back of a bowling center, and you're a chemist. <laughs> and he's, he basically said at the time, he goes, I've got a job for you. Well, John really didn't have a job for me at that time, but he did recommend to uh, Raymond Paquetti that mm -hmm. he should hire me. And I actually went to work for DBA right out of college. And which is where, uh, you know, we did a lot of work with Randy Oak and Mike Sleds back in the day. In fact, you and I did uh, a tournament back in 97 in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. That was definitely a hoot. <laughs> um, you know, full package, though. I can, ima I can see John going, wow. You know, like you said, worked in a bowling center, you bowl, and you're a chemist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that's one of the things about, you know, some of the history to me. It's fascinating because when I came here, you know, it was lane machines. And we were building those for DBA. Um, you know, but the history of KBT, what started? I mean, how, how did we even get into selling lane oil? Well, it's kind of a funny story. I left DBA after about six months, not because I wasn't happy there. I just had, you know, personal things and figured I'd just go hang out in Orlando with my friends for a little while and moved in with them. And I think it was about a month later, John calls me and he said, hey, <laughs> I need you to help me test these conditioners. We're using on tour. I said, okay, John. So went down and he said, tell me what we need to get. So we bought the stuff and uh, started testing it. And um, we noticed some really major inconsistencies in the products we're using on tour. And John goes, we can't have that. I remember on the lane man side, you know, some of the viscosities were all above the thing. We used to have, a, what do we call that, the, where we could check the viscosity by hand with the stopwatch. Oh. You sent us out w with those to check viscosity at times. Correct. Yeah, there was a, those products mm -hmm. all over the board. So basically you got brought on board to fix a problem for the PBA tour, essentially, and for us at that point in time. Yeah. Then John, after well, actually, I started working with John originally, helping him out as well with the ISO program, and then he, after we kept finding these inconsistencies, uh, he decided that, uh, hey, we should just make our own lane conditioner. He goes, I said, so you're saying you want me to make product? He goes, I said, yeah. I said, well, what's my budget, John? He goes, whatever's in the checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Classic John. <laughs> well, let, and let's go to the, some of those different products. I mean, because when I was out there, the you know, the big, the big hit originally was a defense S, essentially. And I mean, I know that when we started using that on tour, obviously ball reaction stabilized uh, quite immediately compared to some of the other products that, that I was involved using out there. But, you know, then we went to offense and Prodigy was a huge hit, obviously still no, one of our number one selling lane conditioners this day. But can you give us a little bit about some of the evolution? You know, I mean, did you create defense S really for tour and then it got into the bowling centers, or, or what was the, your thoughts behind that? Well, when we set out to develop a lane conditioner, I mean, John always asked me the same questions every time. And it's just one question, is it four times better? And it's always been a big debate between John and I what four times means. Are you talking about these four factors? Does it hold up longer? Does it carry down less? Is it easy to clean? Does it not cause problems with the pins? I said, there's four factors right there. If right. all those are better, that's four times better. But John was always referring to, does it hold up four times longer? and the holy grail essentially john was more determined about solving the problem than he was about putting a product out and which was uh, for me as a someone who's developing a product was 
it was dream the whole, it's the holy true. grail. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to sit there and work until we could figure it out. And really what we did with Defense S was we looked at what was out there and what was done, but then we just completely scrapped all that and, and built a whole new base and platform to build conditioners on. And so we, Defense S is, for lack of a better word, is kind of where everything started at and everything evolved out of. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I remember we would uh, we'd pack up the lane machines and and uh, probably nine out of ten stops, a mechanic would say, "Hey, if you got any left over, can you leave that here?" And all of a sudden, I mean, they wanted to use the product after they saw our results in the tour, and they didn't have problems in the back, and you know, it was very stable, and uh, you know, it, and we had some different volume patterns back then, which kind of with the evolution. I mean, as time went on and technology became available, obviously. Uh, you know, you were able to m minimize what we were putting down because at one point we were putting down 42 mils at some of these events. I remember. Remember, we were yes. putting down like a, a base pattern and then a launch pad on top of that. What was that next big evolutionary change chemically for you where you went, wow, this is really going to help that next stage of tournament conditions? Well, we were always fortunate to get a bunch of pros to come down and bowl off mm -hmm. and on. and. Um, and I'll, I'll give some kudos to Jason. Oh, couch? Yes, when oh, he yes. came down and bowled on it, he said, this stuff's just phenomenal. He was like, I can't believe I can, you know, he's lefty, so I can't believe I can stay this far left and, and still get this amazing ball motion. And that's when I really realized that we had had something and, and we were on the right track. Now, wow. and, and the other conditions, like I said, evolved out of that. I mean, as you mentioned, defense, that was specifically for tournaments. Well, not every center hosts tournaments all along although it was a good conditioner for high league lineage and the rest of the conditioners were really were evolved to, to use that concept but to serve different purposes. Sure. Whether it's open play or a mix of league play, open play, and, to, and you know, we're very honest with our products because we tell people, hey, if you got high league lineage, you want to use this one, but if you got a lot of open play, you wouldn't want to use this conditioner, you want to use this one because it's going to give you what you need. And that's really, I mean, that's kind of the answer I give to people when, you know, sometimes at Bowl Expo, they say, wow, you, you guys have, you're constantly, you know, evolving in conditioners, you know, why don't you get rid of all these others? Well, because every situation is a little bit different. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, you know, what fire may work great over here, but, uh, you know, is, is not so good on, on that situation, surface, lineage, or, or event. So when I got asked that question in seminars, and a lot of times I would just go with John and be there to answer random questions. And uh, one of the things, every center is so uniquely different. And when people would ask, hey, what's the best lane conditioner on the market? And I'm going to tell this to everyone out there. It's whatever works well in your center. That's what I always <laughs> said. I probably got that from you, actually, because I, I, I've said that thousands of times. Whatever works for your center and your clientele and your situation. Yeah, always hopeful it's one of mine, but whatever works well. <laughs> what are, you know, in your opinion, I mean, you know, what do you think are some of the things that, that make our chemicals unique? Well, we really looked at the sound theory of lubrication. Okay. Uh, I mean, early lane conditioners were mineral oil solvent, and then they moved to all mineral oil, and then they had some mineral oil and some additives. Uh, but really, the sound base of lubrication is, you know, with our ball going down the lane, with, when the ball hits the lane, you've got to have some cushion barrier as the oil wets the ball, that it can film a film barrier between the ball and the lane. Okay. And I'm not gonna reveal my secrets. <laughs> so, but we were able to, to it's kind of the same way it works in your car. When those pistons are moving up and down, if you don't have that thin barrier, well, you know what's gonna happen to your car. It's gonna yep. seize up and Absolutely. you'll be done. And we, we utilized that mentality when we were making the lane conditioner. And we wanted that thin film barrier, that thin film barrier between the oil that is on the ball and the lane. And that's how we were able to create something so we could go from 40 mils to 20 mils. So 22 years later, because you're, you're starting 22 years this July, um, what is your favorite lane condition? It's always going to be defense S. I, I wondered about that. It, it's always going to be defense S. And th there's some funny stories because we tested it well. We, we hosted all these little tournaments and eventually we decided, uh, hey, let's try this in a, a, a big, in a PBA event. So we tried it at a PBA regional at Camp Lejeune and that went really well. And then uh, John decided, let's try it at the Tournament of Champions. Said, so you picked that PBA event to debut it. <laughs> no, no pressure there. Well, the TV show comes along and you have uh, Mike Miller, uh, Steve Hoskins. Um, I don't remember the other ones, but all slow hookers. And I remember getting a phone call after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't remember who gave me that call, but they said, how the heck is Steve Hoskins playing 10? Yeah, and, really? And Mo Pinnell called me and said, congratulations, you brought back the slow hooker. <laughs> 
So for me, that one will always be what started it all and what we, we built everything off of. Wild, absolutely cool. What is something that most people don't know about you? Well, aside from being a nerd, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, recently I was uh, gonna go back to school to get my GRE Mm -hmm. And I started studying for it. Uh, not, I was actually going to take the GRE so I could go back and get my master's, my MBA. And then I uh, had these strange conversations with people. And um, for those who don't know me, I'm a very devout Christian. Mm -hmm. I work in the church and do things like that. And I had these high school kids I was working with. And they said, you know, you should get into ministry. And I looked at them. I said, me? What the heck's wrong with you? Uh, but then I heard it again and kind of just wondered, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. So I actually am now currently working on my master's in Christian leadership. Um, kind of a little different route because I really wanted to learn more about the leadership side to apply what I do here at the same time learning how to be a minister and a preacher. Well, I think you're a perfect choice for it. You know, I, I support you 100% and we're very proud of you here. Um, that's going to lead into one of my favorite questions. Um, obviously, you're, you're a parent. Uh, you've got a wonderful wife at home as well. What is some advice that you personally would give to up-and-coming youth? You know what, as a bowler when I was young, I always had, I had some goals in bowling. Uh, one of them was to bowl on TV, which I did in 1995. One of them was to uh, cash at a PBA event, which I did. Okay. Um, but beyond that, I just kind of followed where I was led. I, and I wish I could explain that in a way that was understandable. But, you know, a lot of people say, make these massive plans in life, and that's fine. But I think people get so hung up on plans that they actually might miss where life is leading you to. Uh, I started as a business major in college, took a chemistry class, fell in love with it, and here I am sitting today. <laughs> I think that's excellent advice, without a doubt. Kind of goes up there with stop the smell of the roses sometime. Exactly. Dennis, it's been a pleasure as always, brother. I thank you for coming on thank the show. You. and uh, My you pleasure. Have, you have safe travels back, my friend. Um, before we close up, we've had some viewers have uh, emailed us uh, some different questions. So I thought I'd end this show with a uh, question I thought was kind of cool since we've both been here over two decades together. How many years is the longest tenured employee at Kaggle that is not a Davis family member? Is this the trivia question for me? Well, I had to actually, I, I was close, but I, I went and confirmed. I knew the person, but it was Tony Cruz, who Mark Davis hired, and he has been here 27 and a half years. I was close. I had 28. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> leaning towards 28 earlier, but yeah, he's around the corner for, for a 30-year flame, which very few, obviously, people have. But uh, on that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for the day. Keep those wrenches turning. Have a wonderful day.